Welcome to Medica Nova Wellness Studio. I'm Angelica Maria Koch with your educational videos about how to live optimal health and vibrant well-being. So let's continue with our discovery series of the Radical Chakra Healing in the New World. And now it's the fifth chakra called Vishuddha Part 2. It's the voice of your truth, remember? So in this video I would like to share with you how to heal your common thyroid uh, symptoms with natural and effective therapeutic tools. Before we embark on this exciting journey, I would like to share with you an announcement. As this Discovery series is now soon coming to an end, I mean, we are now at the fifth chakra and then we go into six and seven chakra, there's a new project on the horizon and it's going to be called Wellness Moms and Children's Project. And here I would like to address, you know, young moms or dads with the newborns, toddlers and children and all what could happen during these times, either for the parent or the child. It's also going to be coupled with an open Facebook group where you can participate, exchange with your friends and make use of the free service. So to stay updated, I encourage you to subscribe to this channel, like and share it with your friends and family or anybody who is interested in living optimal health. If you're looking for a personal consultation, either for yourself or your children, you can contact me at my website medicanova.net or my email health at medicanova.net. And have a look at my online academy where I offer great comprehensive uh, home study courses in homeopathy, uh, either for the whole family or during the period of pregnancy, giving birth and postnatal care, as well as quantum healing. So let's have a look at our fifth chakra. Now remember the fifth chakra was all about speaking your truth and being truthful to yourself. So this chakra teaches you to speak and express yourself and ultimately, you know, to become the living form of your truth. So the most important organ in this area is the thyroid and the parathyroid as well as the larynx and the cervical vertebrae, but today we talk about the thyroid. Now, the thyroid especially here is important because it really deals with your metabolic rate. Now, I don't want to be too medical here, but let's have a look just more in detail how the thyroid works for you to get a better understanding. So, it is a small butterfly shaped gland and it sits sort of at the base of your neck sort of under uh, your Adam's apple and it produces hormones and these have a huge impact on your general health. So the main part is the thyroid gland really rules the entire metabolism within your body. So how fast your heart beats, how quick you can burn your calories, you know, about your temperature. All this happens with this tiny little butterfly shaped gland in your throat. In addition, the thyroid hormones raise the level of enzymes in every cell sort of energy producing mitochondria. It's the inside of your cell and they are the powerhouses within your body. So there all this energy is actually produced for me to speak to you right now. So when this happens, it increases the utilization of oxygen and therefore it stimulates more energy and your metabolism works better. So in this video, I would like to share with you your thyroid problem is not just related to your gland, but really is a big gamut and a complex story which affects every cell of your body. Now today in our modern society, we experience truly an epidemic of thyroid problems here. Researchers say today that we talk about 80 to 90 percent of the population in the US particular shows and displays a mild deficiency of you know, thyroid function here. And that also has a lot to do with these weight gains. You know, it's not just the American sad diet, but 
The thyroid has a lot to do with the inability to lose weight and then we have this obesity. One reason for poor thyroid function of course is insufficient mineral intakes and here we talk specifically for selenium and zinc. So anybody who suffers from thyroid problems should supplement with a selenium and zinc. Another one is the reduced blood flow towards the thyroid. Now the thyroid gland in itself produces two hormones. One is called T4, which is called thyroxine, and the other one is T3, it's three, it means tri iodothyronine. And this secretion happens by um, a control system, a loop system, which has to do with the hypothalamus gland and the pituitary gland. So they talk to each other. Now the pituitary sort of sits at the base of your brain and the hypothalamus is sort of a part of the structure of the brain. So at the rate of which thyroxine and triiodothyronine are released is controlled by these glands. So the hypothalamus signals your pituitary gland to make a hormone called thyroid stimulating hormone. And this is the very one you are usually tested for in a blood test when you have thyroid symptoms. And then your pituitary gland releases this hormone called thyroid stimulating hormone. And the amount depends on how much thyroxine or triiodothyronine is already in your blood. So if you don't have enough of this T4 and T3 running around in your blood, your THH blood level will be above the normal reference range of your blood um, reference ranges. And if you have too much in your uh, body, then of course the pituitary says, hmm, we don't need to produce more, so the THH uh, level will fall below the normal reference range. So your thyroid gland regulates its production of hormones based on the amount of thyroid stimulating hormone it receives. So you can see that it's a constant talking to each other of these endocrine glands. So as long as your thyroid relates to the proper amounts of these hormones, your systems function quite naturally. Yet in, today, in today's fast living you know, world, to be honest, you know, covered and you know, bombarded with environmental toxins, as well as a diet which lacks the most nutrients, a staggering number of about 80 to 90 percent of the population are somehow affected. And now I want to give you some ideas how complex your thyroid symptoms might be. For example, your thyroid gland might be perfectly well producing the right amount of hormones. But the difficulty gets now, and these hormones, they have to go through your cell membrane to go inside the cell to reach the mitochondria, because there we have the energy production. Now today, the cell membrane is usually quite um, filled up with garbage, with waste products, which happen from the interior of the cells, the energy production, the combustion produces waste, and it needs to be transported outside the cell so it can be discarded by the body. Or we have heavy metals, all this toxicity is sort of clogging up the cell membrane. Also on the cell membrane there are receptors and these thyroid hormones, they sort of dock on there. But if this whole cell membrane is just sort of not available, you know, the thyroid hormones try to find their friend and the message doesn't get through. And then we talk about thyroid resistance and maybe you heard about with diabetics or insulin resistance the same kind of idea, nothing, nothing goes through the cell membrane. 
Another cause may be linked to the thyroid gland itself, which is then polluted with heavy metals. Another possibility could be an inflamed thyroid gland. We call it thyroiditis. And then here we have this excess thyroid hormones which are stored in the glands and then eventually leak into the bloodstream. One of the causes could be also a very weak liver. Now the liver here comes into play because the body is so intelligent and it always has a backup system. So it always uses other organs or other sy systems to back up if one link in the chain is not working. So the liver is partly taking on T4 as well, and which is the thyroxine hormone, and it converts it into this active hormone T3. But if the liver is weak, that cannot happen either, and that can affect the thyroid then as well. But if I really choose one of the ones on this list is the digestive system. The digestive system has a direct link to your thyroid gland, particularly if you suffer from leaky gut syndrome, and most of us do. It means there are little holes in your colon wall and the food doesn't properly you know, sufficiently through the colon and out through the anus, but it goes back into the bloodstream and then we have autoimmune diseases, your immune system kicks in as well in order to fight this what shouldn't be in your body. So we, if you want to change your underfunctioning or hyperfunctioning thyroid symptoms, you start with your digestive system. You clean it out and then you rebuild your bowel flora. So you talk about parasites, you know, virus, bacteria, in particular the microbiomes within your bowel flora, they need to be you know, really re-established again. Now, the reason why I'm saying is because uh, in bread today, for example, uh, we find more bromine and not just iodine. It was replaced with bromine and that inhibits also the thyroid function and therefore part of the thyroid problems could be an iodine deficiency here as well. Fluoride in municipal water very, very much uh, disrupts the thyroid function. Other reasons could be x-rays, mammograms, dental treatments, definitely, and electromagnetic devices, and I would say lack of antioxidants, nutrients. You know, your immune system is now very much affected and a good thyroid program should provide all of these factors and not just uh, synthetic prescribed uh, thyroid hormone just to hope that the levels will go down or up again in, in your blood reference ranges. Also what I would like to say is stress. Yes, we say oh, stress is just part of life now, but stress really affects your thyroid because it releases, or it really in this case affects your adrenals glands first, which are part of the endocrine system, and it releases adrenal stress hormones that suppress the thyroid function and then also encourages this thyroxine resistance which I was just talking about before where uh, the hormones don't go through the cell wall. In my practice I often look at people's iris or the white of the eye called the sclera and I can see that today most uh, thyroid problems are caused by a weak or exhausted adrenal gland first. And the reason is the endocrine system is really connected with each other. We have the hypothalamus, pituitary, thyroid, adrenal, pancreas, ovaries, testes, and so on. They talk to each other all the time. And if one you know, isn't so well, the other one will be, it's like a domino effect, will be affected. Now when the adrenal gland gets just you know, exhausted because we have a lifestyle as if a line, line is running behind us each and every day, um, eventually the adrenal gland will look for a friend to lean on and the next one in line in this chain would be the thyroid gland. So 
support your uh, adrenal glands very well here. So can a thyroid imbalance affect your moods? And I say yes, absolutely yes. So if you are hyper-functioning, which means overdrive, then you have anxiety, agitation, frustration, restlessness, right? And then maybe the heart palpitations. If you're under-functioning, which is much more common today, then you have this fatigue, uh, definitely depression. There could be anxiety too, but much more prone to the depression area. Um, thyroid imbalances are shown in sign and symptoms. So if you're under-functioning, we have the hair loss and the cold hands and feet and definitely constipation. So if you suffer from chronic constipation, it's not just a bowel problem. Have a look at your thyroid. Of course, temperature imbalances. Also during menopause, uh, women suffer a lot from thyroid problems. The thyroid is very much affected during this time. And then sort of dormant genetic layers could come up to the surface. Now here at Medica Nova, at the practice of integrated and educational medicine, we offer a great program, a thyroid program, so if you're interested in that, have a look at the website medicanova.net. Now, what should it entail? You know, a really good thyroid program, as I said, should address all these pointers, what I just mentioned to you. It should have a plant-based herbal formula, which addresses the thyroid function, the thyroid integrity, the iodine deficiency, and definitely the lack of antioxidants. It also, as I said before, should address the adrenal glands. It's very, very important with high antioxidants. And just to uh, support this intracellular metabolic rate. Another one would be uh, the name methylation. Maybe you heard about it. So stress in our lives depletes the body of a molecule called methyl group, that part of the DNA. And this is very much important here, particularly if there is family genetic predisposition of thyroid diseases happening. Now these methyl groups, they have the power to turn off the stress response within our body so they can actually silence unwanted you know, uh, mutated genes within our body, which is very important. They're also great for the detoxification pro uh, uh, process within the body. So a good program also includes a formula which can provide quantum cellular nutrients which the cell needs to create energy. And this energy happens within the mitochondria, within the interior of the cell. And it's called ATP or adenosine triphosphate. So we need this energy and the thyroid needs it particular to make hormones. So do you see the whole story is much more complex. It's not just related to this gland. Your thyroid needs the energy production within your cells and your body needs the thyroid to make the hormones in order to create energy. So it's an interplay here. And finally, of course, it's, we need to provide in this program uh, something which cleanses the cell membrane, the toxic and the clogged up uh, in a garbage full cell membrane. And in this case, we need a combination of oils. So we have phospholipids, we need antioxidant amino acids, we need a particular combination of coconut oil. In this case, I would say slap lots of coconut oil once a day onto your thyroid. She, she or he really loves it. Flaxseed oil, we have grapeseed oil, we have hemp oil, omega-3, 6 and 9, Parilla oil is a great one here as well because it's a great omega-3 and it's from the mint family, comes from East, uh, Eastern Asia. But pumpkin seed oil and of course vitamin E, so that needs to be in a formula as well. 
Now remember that thyroid hormones, they must stock on these receptors which are in the cell membrane and it, that happens because they initiate an activity for the liver to convert what I said before, the T4 into T3. And when we have an inflamed uh, cell membrane, that function cannot happen. You see, it's like one organ is not separate from the rest of, of the body. They're, um, it's like a relationship, it's like a marriage. You can't just single out one and hope that the body will fall into place. In holistic medicine, you have to address the entire body. And then, of course, I really would like to mention here homeopathy. I'm a homeopath, and I've seen many times that with homeopathy, applied homeopathy alone, you can change your thyroid levels, particularly if it's a primary thyroid imbalance, so it's not affected necessarily so much by the pituitary or the adrenal glands. Right? Now, I give you a little picture here so you can have a look at the program. I also would like to mention a very important point here. One of the best single sort of physical therapies you can do for the thyroid gland are medical meditations. And they are Kundalini Yoga exercises and I refer to Meditation as Medicine. It's a book from Dharma Singh Khalsa and Cameron Stout which provides great exercises how to heal your thyroid with these beautiful practices. And these practices, I share them with you in other videos, they are a combination of mudras, finger mudras, um, breathing exercises, mantras, in this case it would be Wahi Guru, means from darkness to light, and body postures. And they really work very, very well on the thyroid. Why? Because Maybe I mentioned it in the beginning of this video that there may be a reduction of blood flow to the thyroid which causes the symptoms for you to experience. And these exercises will really enhance the blood flow again, which is so important. Now, next to the genetic family disposition, when the ethereal energy to the throat chakra is deficient, it can result in insufficient thyroid function and then we have hypothyroidism. On the other hand, if we have sort of a blocked fifth chakra and we don't speak our truth, right? when the energy is just stuck there, and it gets trapped in there, and it builds up to excessive levels, then we see hyperthyroidism. So it's not just a physical problem, it's an etheric, it's an electromagnetic problem as well. So excessive ethereal energy can then also contribute in this inflammatory condition which we call thyroiditis. Now next to the thyroid we have two glands, they're called parathyroid glands. And people say, oh they have not much to do really. Well they're very important too because they really relate to your calcium metabolism and particularly deficiency of morph magnesium. So in the elderly if there are cramps and the coughs and the muscle pain, you know, add up, just, you know, bring in your calcium magnesium supplement here because you maybe your parathyroid isn't working very well. Now, they did some lab experiments with animals. Of course, I don't like it, but it just shows how important the parathyroid really is. So when they removed this gland in these animals, they quick, quickly began to suffer from lethargy, anorexia, vomiting, temperature drop of course, multiple muscle spasms and eventually cardiac failure. Their, their respiratory system totally shut down and they died. So we need this little glance. So even a mild deficiency can cause bone loss, osteoporosis, I mentioned also in this cramping in the muscles. So other diseases of the fifth chakra have a lot to do with your larynx. Right? Um, singers, for example, they constantly have a sore throat, speakers. I would say the parathyroid gland lesion, yes, and of course the malignancy with esophageal or laryngeal um, cancer then. 
So the final important you know, physical attribute and feature I would like to mention is the vagus nerve. It's our tense cranial nerve and it goes from your jaw all the way through your heart, your lungs and your upper abdomen, that means your stomach. Now this nerve is so important in your body because it really connects you also to your higher chakras, to your spiritual path. And a proper function of the vagus nerve is extremely important for optimal function of all vital organs, but particularly around the abdomen. Now the vagus nerve is also directly uh, connected to the autonomic nervous system. And the autonomic nervous system has two branches, which means the sympathetic uh, nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. And the vagus nerve is directly related to the parasympathetic nervous system, which it has all to do with your relaxation and repair function of your nervous system. Right? So if your vagus nerve is affected, it's very hard for you to heal inside or even to find peace and the organs have no space and time to rest. But there's so much more to say. You know, in this video I can only sort of scratch on a few pointers here and we haven't even touched the whole nutrition part yet. But I would like to share with you if you suffer from Hashimoto and thyroid disorders, which means also here the autoimmune system is already affected here, then Stay away a little bit or moderate cruciferous foods. And we talk about um, cauliflower, cabbage, kale, bok choy, soya products, you know, radishes. I'm not saying these foods are bad. Often scriptures say, you know, take them out completely. I would say um, to, in moderation because these foods also uh, provide really great nutrients. But when you choose this food, then please buy it in an organic form. You know, we don't want more toxins already within the body. I think that's all I have to say today with this video about thyroid symptomatology. I hope in this video you could really appreciate that a common thyroid disorder is not just related to the gland itself, but really shows a complexity and a beauty in treating the whole body. And when you do that, the thyroid relaxes and doesn't have to produce all the symptoms. I'm not saying you should stop your synthetic thyroid hormone, by all means, no. But bear in mind that to treat the thyroid in the right way, you will have to look at other factors as well. I myself experience underfunctioning thyroid partly because I've inherited from my mother all the women in our family are affected by uh, thyroid disorders. And yes, I tried the synthetic hormones, but really didn't go very far. It, oh, huge side effects. So I refer to my natural program and I feel well, so it can be done. So subscribe to my channel, share and like these videos and hope to see you in two weeks again. And in the meantime, much love. Take care. Mm -hmm.